So today I'm reacting to the response to CoffeeZilla's video series, three part series on Logan Paul's crypto zoo scam, which was absolutely a scam. I guess the only thing up for debate is who did the most scamming, really. But I was going to do a video on that series, but the videos are very long. I just didn't have time to really make videos on it at this point. But we have just a simple, short, seven minute response to uh, that video series from Logan Paul himself. And my God, is this video bad? And you can see it in the uh, ratio here of likes to dislikes 84,000 likes, 290,000 dislikes with good reason. So let's get right into it. CoffeeZilla. I watched your three part series called Investigating Logan Paul's Biggest Scam. And like many on this platform, you have successfully used my name for views and money. While your work used to be impartial, your addiction to clicks has clouded your judgment and you've made very real errors with very real repercussions. Coffee, you took a shot at my reputation. Uh, so in this video today, I'm gonna be defending myself with facts, something that you have gotten in the habit of twisting as you continue to morph from an investigator to a gossip channel. You see, CoffeeZilla tried to work with law enforcement in the past, but his work was described as not anchored to truth and often speculative. He not anchored to truth and often speculative. Interesting. So where's the proof? I, what, what detective said this? What police department said this? Where's, where's the statement? Where's the link to the statement? Where, where is the proof that this was actually said by anyone? Just a thought. He is a lopsided journalist with an agenda, and he's nothing more than the keem star of crypto and finance. But as opposed to just telling you, I'm going to show you some of the core discrepancies that I caught in CoffeeZilla's investigation. Coffee, you interviewed the developer who stole the game code, fled to Switzerland, and held it hostage for a million dollars. Well, his name is Zach Kelling. Surely, as the internet detective that you proclaim to be, you would know that he spent time in prison for multiple felonies, one for aggravated robbery, armed robbery at a liquor store, and the other for, surprise, using that guy who worked for you to get information about what was going on at your business your response to him is saying oh you can't trust what this guy says you can't trust his word he's a criminal look at his look at his criminal record you hired him <laughs> you hired this guy obstructing the legal process. I can see why you kept him anonymous. Who will be calling Z here? I guess among many things, it doesn't surprise me that he lied about having 30 engineers and a $50,000 a week burn rate. On my end, I have 30 engineers, I'm burning $50,000 which side note is how this delusionist landed on the million dollar code ransom, but it turns out he only had three engineers. Wouldn't someone with journalistic integrity know their credible source had not only an agenda, but a fondness for orange jumpsuits or. Again, proving, proving he only had three engineers because of some pictures that someone posted on Twitter. I mean, how do you know he didn't have people working overseas? I mean, when you're working on it, stuff that's digital and can be stored on a cloud, you can have people working around the world on it. So again, you know, statements with no factual evidence to back them up. You know, this, this whole video is painfully hypocritical. Did you just hear what you wanted to hear and moved on? Because even if you're lying to yourself, Steven, you still have to believe it. And I know what you're thinking. What type of idiot would work with an unsavory individual like Zach Kelling? You. I guess that's what I get for trusting the team that I relied on to vet and manage Eddie's hiring process, who has turned out to be a professional con man that I have since learned fooled billionaires, the Mormon church, the owner of the New York Yankees, and now me. And surely you knew Emilio, the gentleman who supposedly let his child invest in a cryptocurrency, was allegedly responsible for two rug pulls before you interviewed him. So either you missed that or you knew it and failed to let the public know. Why? Because it was a clear sign that he was also untrustworthy. You seemed pretty excited when the guy told you that he couldn't hatch the eggs. Wait, you can't even hatch? No, I'm telling you, it's just a picture. You're kidding! You can't hatch? You're kidding! You can't hatch? You can't hatch? Uh, yeah, one second of research research would prove that to be false as you can definitely hatch eggs and even breed your eggs. <laughs> oh my god bro you hatch and it's just a picture of an elephant off google images like literally that's what this is 
It looks so stupid, dude. That, I mean, I don't know whether you can hatch or not. I mean, a, some people say you can. Some people say you can't. I guess the only way to find out would be to actually go use CryptoZoo, which I'm not going to do. But let me know if you use CryptoZoo in the comments down below because I have no idea. I mean, I wouldn't touch anything that Logan Paul came out with with a 10-foot pole, to be quite honest with you. Animals. Click on that. Oh, we got a duck. And as you pointed out in your fine print, cross-hatching was available. Bro. Those aren't NFTs. They're literally just pictures off of Google images. It's ridiculous. Well, on ETH at one point, but you perpetuated the opposite as truth with your chest out. Basically, nothing worked. And by the way, guy, almost all NFTs are just pictures. Oh, it's just a picture. And surely a real. Um, no. An NFT should be an art piece that was, you know, either digitally created or created in real life and then the picture was taken of it it shouldn't just be an image that you that somebody else took that you then either bought or just stole and put it in on an nft and sold it for real money just saying real internet detective would not break criminal and civil laws in trying to get information right so why have you allowed the illegal recording of jeff's phone call without his permission also, I'd like to say about this, this, this is um, different in every state. So certain, some states have different laws. This isn't like, I don't think, this definitely is not a federal law as far as I know, where on a federal level, you cannot record someone's phone call. This is, I think this is a, this is a state thing. So maybe in certain states, it is illegal. Other states, it's not illegal. I'm not sure what state CoffeeZilla lives in or Logan Paul, but you know, it could be illegal in his state, but legal in Coffee state or vice versa. So with that being said, this is um, more, I take this as more of a threat than an actual accusation. And then more like an internet criminal, post it online. And it was interesting, it was like, this is wild. Now, although you didn't verify any backgrounds, substantiate any evidence, took multiple criminals' words as truth, and broke laws, you still post um, It was, okay, so it was a journalistic endeavor where he simply collected information and then presented that information and, and reacted to that information. He didn't come up with any new information. He didn't come up with his own information. He simply got information from individuals, react to it, reacted to it, and that was it. He didn't say, this is, this is a fact that I came up with myself, or this is my opinion, which I'm propagating as a fact. He simply got information reported on that information and he's protected as a journalist to do to do so as far as i know this is not what i would consider to be a definite defamation case publish the defamation however unlike you the blockchain doesn't lie so let's highlight some things that you did point out crypto king jake stole six million dollars true or not we had already removed him from the team when we realized he was a bad actor and his motives were purely financial con man eddie lead developer why did you make the NFT project in the first place? Why did you make CryptoZoo? Did you make it because you thought it would be cool? I mean, that's what you're trying to make it seem like. Oh, it was just a cool project. We want to make a fun game. The game isn't fun. It's not a, even really a game. You stole the images off or bought them from some dump somewhere. And it's, it's I mean, I know Logan's not going to play this game. So why, why the hell did he make it? Why the hell did he make it? Because he wanted to make money. Come on. Everybody involved in this situation was involved to make money. Just because Logan Paul didn't make money doesn't mean that he didn't plan to make money. First stole $1.7 million. True or not, when we learned he was a bad actor as well, he was immediately removed from the team. While myself and Jeff sold nothing and made nothing as verified through investigation and the blockchain. Jeff... Logan's manager, to my knowledge, never sold. Neither did Logan Paul. I repeat, Jeff and I made no money and will never make any money on CryptoZoo. In fact, we only lost money trying to pick up the pieces. Okay. CoffeeZilla literally said that in his video that you didn't make any money, so why are you reiterating it? Because this isn't really about what CoffeeZilla said. This is about the backlash because his videos got like, I don't know, between the three of them got like over 10, 15 million views. And now he's getting, yeah, Logan's getting spammed.
probably on all his social media getting ratioed, you know, with people hating on him. And, you know, he's panicking a little bit. And I guarantee you this video is made in a panic. And I guarantee you this video probably won't even be on YouTube within the next couple of weeks. Because it's just, it's not a good look. It's painfully hypocritical. And just comes off as kind of narcissistic and weird. As has been the case with dozens of crypto and NFT projects, the space is unfortunately ripe for bad actors to infiltrate projects that start with even the best intentions. Jake the Snake is no longer affiliated with CryptoZoo and we hope the money he reappropriated was worth ruining his reputation. Con man Eddie is being investigated by a higher authority that I cannot speak on. As you can imagine, I was not cleared from legal to discuss much of this, including the legal process being undertaken and the criminal investigations going on during the fallout, but I do appreciate you calling out that rat under my nose, stole the game code, millions of dollars, and left Jeff and I abandoned with no team and knives in our back. But even after 12 months of work, you've still managed to overlook one crucial piece of information. See, even though I've said it's coming so many times, you've assumed that CryptoZoo isn't being made. Who are you to decide when the development timeline ends? I got everything stolen from me and our community, stopped promoting publicly as soon as I knew the extent of the internal issues, took all of the heat on social, and you still published a defamatory hit piece, fully knowing I was innocent, just so you could enrich yourself in your fully $10 million no. studio. Sharp, but deeply unethical, dangerously misleading, and illegal. I suggest you use the money you got from pumping your Patreon on to hire a good lawyer. You're gonna need it. And maybe we could have talked about this if you had reached out to me personally, not Okay, so we all know, we've seen the messages, we've seen the DMs, right? We've seen the emails. We know that he did reach out to Logan. Logan did not want to talk to him and had coffee talk to his lawyer. Now, all of these legal threats, you recorded a phone call illegally Maybe it was illegal in his state. Maybe it wasn't. I mean, that's a misdemeanor. And I mean, anyway, even if it was illegal, which it might not be, some states you can record phone calls. Um, and number two, defamation. I mean, I don't see how getting, doing a story on something and getting information from people and then reporting on that information is defamation. You're simply doing a story and there are protections under the Constitution of the United States when it comes to that kind of stuff. So I, I don't really see the legal uh, angle that he's getting here other than just trying to threaten CoffeeZilla because, let's be honest, he's butthurt, right? He's triggered. My manager, Jeff, who is not me, me, Steven, but the first time you did was on Christmas Eve after you released your series so you could rely on false statements and unreliable people used recklessly. The subject line was third request for comment. Yeah, not quite. This will be my third time reaching out to you and your team. The first two times were through your manager, Jeff. The first two times were through your manager, Jeff. Okay, so the last time on Christmas Eve, after the fact, was to me, you have a funny way of twisting things. And I also noticed you left out that part on Twitter. Why hide that? Trust me, CryptoZoo is coming. I will make damn sure of it. And honestly, it f sucks that after years of personal reform, going through trials and tribulations and busting my ass to evolve into a person that I can say I'm actually proud of, you led the charge to drive and monetize a narrative telling millions of people that I'm a fraud or I tried to scam my audience. That is patently false. This video is mainly for my fans and anyone who's on the fence that I hope I can help understand a situation that is tremendously complex, but has been oversimplified for both views and clicks. And lastly, CoffeeZilla. I now know your motives with this. Clout and money, good for you, but also your, your slimy as f So I'm not gonna come on any of your podcasts. If you wanna come on Impulsive and talk about this, that's fine. You've denied my invitation multiple times. You're still invited. It can be a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if not, we're going to handle this ourselves. I'd love while to we see that. Build crypto zoo and I'll see you in court. And then he ends it with a promotion of crypto zoo, bro. Oh my God. Crypto. So crypto zoo works. You can hatch. And everything about CryptoZoo worked, but it's coming in 2023, 2024. Okay. Look, let's be honest here. Even if CryptoZoo did work, it was still a garbage project.
I mean, 100%. It had the, it wasn't even art. I mean, crypt, NFTs are supposed to be art. They're not just supposed to be pictures, like Lo Logan said. It's supposed to be art. Somebody is supposed to put in some time and some effort and actually create something. Not just buy JPEGs off fucking Adobe Photoshop or download them off Google Images. But, you know... 2022 was a crazy year for this kind for all this stuff going on and it, it looks like 2023 shaping up to be an even crazier year if you guys want to stay up to date on what's going on in crypto land make sure you subscribe to my channel if you like this video make sure to like comment down below and i'll see you tomorrow mm -hmm.